Gracious Father, we want to thank you for being able to rise. You may be right to this hour, the morning, place, the worship yeah. Yeah. the worship to you out of our most holy name. Mm -hmm. Most gracious Father, we ask you to bless each and every one here on the south of my week. Yeah. Yeah. Father, I ask you to build us up where we're most torn apart. Strengthen mm -hmm. us where we're most weak. Father, pull us together where we're most weak. Oh, oh, yeah. Most gracious Father, I ask you to bless those that follow our uh, have a desire to be here on the Lord. Father, I ask you to serve the hearts of those that probably don't even desire to come. Well, most gracious Father, we ask you to bless those that Father that are sick among us. Yeah. Yeah. Father, I ask you to bless those that are less fortunate. Yeah. Most gracious Father, I ask you to please bless this country in a special way. Yeah. Yeah. Father, I ask you to people in this country realize that time is winding up. Yeah. Well, most gracious Father, we ask you to live with all our many different sins. Yeah. 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 Father, I ask you to come and do what I'm going to do. Let us notice for our responsive reading today, Psalm 124. Psalm 124. The 124th Psalm. And we will read this psalm in its entirety, verses 1 to 8. Let us please stand as we read our responsive reading, Psalm 124. If you have it, say amen. amen. Psalm 124, beginning at verse 1 and concluding at verse 8, and we will read these verses responsibly. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, Then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Let us read together. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let's with me standing as we sing our morning hymn, hymn number 211, Leaning on the Everlasting Arm. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms.
God, you ought to have joy today. Still have joy. There's a difference between happiness and joy. Happiness depends on your circumstances. But joy depends on your faith. Sometimes when things are not going right, we don't feel so happy. But then if we take just enough time to think about Jesus. You take just enough time to see how far he brought you. You can't help but feel joy. So I'm glad that we still have joy. Through the storm, through the rain. No matter what comes our way, the joy is still there. Yeah. Jeremiah says, like fire, shut up in our bones. I heard someone say, there's an ever-flowing fountain that never runs dry. Do you have joy today? Yeah. Amen. We still have joy. And, and that joy ought not just be here at Gravel Hill. Uh, when we leave Gravel Hill, we should still have joy. Uh, because sometime this week, I know we're going to need it. And if we have Jesus in our hearts, I know we're going to have joy. Amen? Amen. As we come together for prayer today, we ought to be joyful that we have a God we can talk to. Amen. we got a God we can call our Father. And that ought to make us joyful. That ought to make us rejoice. Indeed, because we can call him any time of the day, and we know he will be right there. Amen? Amen. As we go to God in prayer uh, on today, let us continue to remember all those who are uh, on our sick and setting list, those who are going through uh, bereavement, and pray uh, that God will be uh, with them. Uh, the Nashville community, and I think all of Tennessee is this morning mourning the the death of the great uh, Morgan Babb, who passed on Friday. That song that we sing, Pray For Me, yeah, that's, he wrote that song, Pray For Me. And if you listen to 880 any time when it was you know, his station, uh, that song was on. And so we certainly are saddened uh, by his departure. Let's pray for the Babb uh, family. Uh, as they go through that time of bereavement. Uh, let us lift up our own Sister Hattie McDonald. Uh, Hattie is not here this morning. She uh, had surgery a few days ago and I spoke to her on yesterday and she's doing well. And we thank God that Jesus is still that doctor uh, who stands in our sick room and takes care uh, of us. So let's lift her up in a very special way. Continue to remember uh, Sister Sally Carter in her family's bereavement, uh, J.D. and Jamaica Thomas in their bereavement, and, and others who have gone through death and sorrow over the past uh, couple of days. Let's lift them up in prayer. My brothers and sisters, let's pray for this country. Uh, let's pray for this country, that God will have his way in this great nation. We pray that God will uh, give wisdom to the leaders of this nation, that they would do that which is uh, pleasing to God, that which is in accordance with his will. So as we go to prayer this morning, if you'd like to come forward, you may. If you'd like to remain in your seat, you may. But let us all go to God in prayer at this time. Let us come. For somebody. Is there anyone here who knows God is able? Do you know that God is able? Amen. Let's trust Him today knowing that He can do all things but fail. That He's a great God. He's a powerful God. He's an almighty God. Awesome God. And whatever He says, He can do. Guess what, y'all? He can do it. And I think we've tried Him enough to know that we'll trust Him every day. Not just one day, but every day with any situation we have. Put it in Jesus' hands, and he'll work it out for you. Amen? Amen. We shall now have our knowledge.
Good morning. Good morning. First, give honor to God, who's worthy to be praised, to Pastor Raisberry and Reverend Baden and all our Christmas friends. We're just so glad to be here today. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. Glad to have Brother Vincent and Sister Lisa back with us today. Yeah. We're just so glad to see all of you out this little dreary day outside, but the Lord is truly in this holy temple today. For our announcements and correspondence, <clears throat> Grand Hill Baptist Church, thank you so much for your many acts of kindness shown during the loss of our loved one. The plan is so beautiful and will be a reminder of Vesta's spirit. Your prayers have lightened our burden and your visits have given us strength and inspiration. May the Lord bless each of you, the Carter, Gaddis, and Walker families. February 1st, <coughs> Key United Methodist Church, Hartsford, Tennessee, with Clarence H. Cartwright, Pastor. Valentine's Tea, Sunday, February 9th at 3 o'clock p.m., <coughs> Guest Rocky Creek Fellowship Church in Hartsford, Reverend Samuel Dodson, Pastor. Black History Month, Sunday, February 23rd, 3 p.m., <coughs> Guest Greater, Be Greater Beach Hill Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend Ran David Randolph, Pastor. You're invited to come and worship with us in these glorious times. From the Williams Chapel Baptist Church, Reverend Henry T. Clark, Pastor. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the members of Williams Chapel Baptist Church would like to invite you to fellowship with us for our homecoming on August the 24th at 3 p.m. We ask that Reverend Rainsbury deliver the word of God and all other auxiliaries to serve in their respective places. Lunch will be served before the afternoon service begins, so we ask that you come right after your morning worship. Please respond if you can or cannot fellowship with us on this occasion. Yours in Christian love, Reverend Henry T. Clark, Sonia Richardson, Correspondent Secretary. For our announcements, uh, I'm much anticipated service on uh, next Sunday, the 16th, ordination and licensing service. Ordination for Ron Dan Baden and licensing and preaching of his first sermon for DPC Politica. And we are just so excited about this. And God is so good and, and using the members of our church. So we just want to show our full support to, to the uh, Ron Baden and to Deacon Politica for. He's already preached his sermon to us on several occasions, but this will be his official sermon. So please let everyone know. We've sent our correspondence, but please let everyone we know and see uh, to come out and join us in this grace worship service. And we will uh, have lunch. We're going to have chicken, green beans, potato salad, pasta salad, coleslaw, casserole, sandwiches, dessert, tea, and drinks. So please see Sister Lizzie Malone, and uh, she will tell you what we need. And please... Uh, be obedient. On uh, Sunday, March the 9th at 3 p.m., we will uh, we will have worship service here. This is sponsored by the youth and young adults. Our guest minister will be from Preston Carter, from Lily Hill Baptist Church, the Lily Hill Choir, and the Christ United Spirit Field will sing. Mr. Trina Calhoun is the youth and young adult president. And then on Saturday, March the 22nd at 4 p.m., we will have a uh, for musical here at the church, Sister Jackie and Brother Edgar will be sponsoring this program. This is leading up to Pastor Rainsbury's anniversary, so we're looking forward to this musical on Saturday the 22nd. Then our uh, pastor's anniversary um, uh, announcements is in the bulletin, but don't forget, members, you are asked to give $150, and you can start paying on your pledge. Like always, please see our financial department. They will record your name uh, and the money that you turn in. Um, some people on last Sunday, uh, I did announce them, but uh, we have our February birthdays that we want to remember. On Thursday was Brother Ron Moore's birthday. And uh, on uh, yesterday was Brother uh, Eric Rhodes. And on Thursday, the 13th, will be Do Brother Don Winchester. And on Valentine's Day, the 14th, will be Brother Dwayne Harper. And on the Monday, the 17th, Brother Casey Lewis. And on Tuesday, the 18th, Sister Sally Carter. 
And then on Friday the 28th, the of Manchester, so please be sure our birthday people are happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. We'll have to see Vincent Friday. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to see him. Yeah. Yeah. Lisa, I bet good to see you. Hey, Amen. Been missing you. God bless you for being here on uh, today. And I'm so glad to see again all of you here on uh, today. It may be raining outside, but the sun is shining inside. Amen. Amen. I, I'm really looking forward to again next Sunday to see how God is going to bless us um, as we ordain one and license uh, the other here at uh, Gravel Hill. Um, there will be many people here uh, next week, so let's come prepared to serve and make them comfortable. And uh, just looking forward to God showing out, showing up and showing out, as he always does. And I pray that in doing so, uh, may all of you uh, be blessed. It's a history moment, historical moment, in the life of Gravel Hill. And we ought to be very proud, amen? Uh, Sister Demetra Thomas, uh, Sister Demetra Thomas sent her thanks and appreciation uh, to all of you who called her and JD during the uh, bereavement, uh, the, the death of JD's mother. Uh, they did go down to Georgia to bury her, and uh, they're back now. And uh, she asked me to convey her thanks and appreciation, and she said. You know yourself, who, all of you who called, she said to thank all of you for uh, your thoughts, your calls, and your prayers. And then that God bless you as we continue to, to move forward. So please continue uh, to pray for them as they go through this time of uh, bereavement. Earlier during the prayer moment, I asked that we pray for uh, this nation. I really hope and pray you, you heard that and and take it seriously. Um, uh, this this nation is 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 going in some strange directions, and the only one who can keep us straight is God Himself. So let's continue to pray for America. Continue to pray for the president and his cabinet. Um, pray for not just Gravel Hill, but churches everywhere. Uh, that God will continue to be with us as we go through these turbulent uh, times. It's always good uh, to pray ahead of a situation. I'm always reminded of, of Daniel when he went to the lion's den. Uh, he prayed three times a day, always prayed. And so when he got to the lion's den, guess what? His prayers were already answered uh, because the lions didn't uh, attack him. So let's be in prayer. Uh, for this nation and for the church and pray that God will have his way uh, among us. We hope and pray that you will have a good time while we're here today. Amen. The choir has started already telling us. Amen. We still have joy. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, Bert sounded like she knew what she was singing about. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I'm glad we all have joy. But let's enjoy the presence of of the Lord today as we worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us come together in fellowship. All right, my brothers and sisters, let us now make ready to bring our tithe and offerings into the storehouse. Our ushers and our deacons are going to direct us as we come.
Lord, please bless those who gave in this offering. Heavenly Father, please bless those who want to give and just did not have. Let this offering be used for the uplifting of thy kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Right. 
and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, afore Isaiah was gone out of out into the midst of the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. I want to preach about when God gives you another chance. When God gives you another chance. Now, now notice, notice I, I didn't didn't say when God gives you a second chance. Uh, there, are, there are some people who call God the God of a second chance, or some even call him the God of one more uh, chance. And, and they can say that if they want to, that's their right. But I choose to call God the God of a, another chance because God has given us chance at the chance, at the chance to get it right. Yes. Uh, the, the, the reason I, I call God the God of another chance is because I ran out of my second chance many, many years ago. Yes. In, in, in fact, if the truth be told, I, God has given me so many chances I've lost count uh, because that's how many chances he's given uh, to me. What, what, what chances uh, has God given to me, gradually? Well, when I've done wrong, God has given me chances to do right. Uh, when I have offended someone, God has given me chances to reconcile with that person. When, when, God, when I have gone against God's will, God has given me the chance to repent and move in the right direction. When I have failed, God has given me the chance to try again and again until I get it right. I'm trying to tell somebody today that the God I serve is the God of another chance. Let me see if I can put it to you like this. When, when, when we go to bed at night and, and we close our doors and, and get in our comfortable beds, if, if God were to check the record from the day before and see how many wrongs we may have done in a day, I'm here to tell you, Gravel Hill, we won't be here today. But every morning when we wake up, every morning when the sun breaks through the skies, every morning when we get out of our beds, I'm here to tell you that God is giving us another chance. We are here right now in worship because God has given us not a second chance, not a third chance. He's given us another chance. Yeah. If you read the Bible, if you read the Bible, you'll see where God is a God who gives many chances. You remember a man named Jonah, don't you? When God told Jonah to go down to Nineveh and preach his word and, and, jo and, and Jonah went down to Joppa and didn't do what God said. God could have killed Jonah but God gave him another chance. You know the story. He got in a ship and went down into the water into a fish and the fish spit him out and he was able to go and do what God said. You remember Hezekiah, we just talked about him. How Hezekiah was sick unto death. In fact, God told Isaiah, go tell Hezekiah he's going to die. I don't know anybody who wants to receive a word like that. But he goes, go and tell Hezekiah he's about to die. And Hezekiah began to pray. The text says he turned his face to the wall. Has anybody here ever turned your face? 
place to the wall before and pray. And when he prayed, God gave him another chance. Anybody here know about a man named David? You know what David did. David messed up. Not only did he sleep with Bathsheba, but he had her husband killed. But David asked God for forgiveness, and God gave him another chance. Is there anybody here who remember a man named Paul? You know how Paul went about persecuting Christians? But one day on his master's road, you remember how Jesus met Paul and, and said to Paul, no, you're not going to persecute Christians. You're going to preach Christ and gave him another chance. I'm just trying to tell somebody here today, God is a God of another chance. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if there's not sufficient examples for you to know that God has given you another chance on a count of three, everybody take a deep breath. One, two, three, breathe. Uh huh. All right. You, 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 you did breathe, didn't you? Yes, sir. Everybody here, raise your left hand. Now raise your right hand. I'm going to tell you, God has given you another chance. That's why you can breathe. That's why you can move your hands. That's why you can move your limbs. And that's why you're present in this house today. Thank God for another chance. God gives us new chances because he desires to do new things in our life. When you look at Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19, you see what God says to the children of Israel. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it's a spring for, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God gives us new chances because he is a merciful God. When you look at Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, it, the, the, the writer of, of Lamentations, Jeremiah says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. There are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. God gives us new chances because he is a forgiving God, when you look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, the writer says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God gives us chances because he is a loving God. You remember what Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verse 16? He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I know we only quote that verse when we're talking about salvation, but I'm here to tell you that Jesus is love. God's love goes beyond salvation because even after we're saved, every day we wake up, God loved us so much that he touches us with his finger of love. I'm glad today that I serve a God of another chance. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, since we know that God is the God of another chance, since we know that he will give us chances after chances, the question then is, what should we do when we have another chance? How should we respond to God when he gives us another chance. First of all, let me suggest this to you. First of all, when God gives you another chance, give him the praise. Yes, yes. When God gives you another chance, give him the praise. I tell you, when I wake up in the morning, even if I can't say a long prayer, at least I can say thank you, Lord. If I can't say a long prayer on my knees, you know the knees are getting a little stiff now. Amen, somebody. If I can't get on my knees and say a long prayer, at least I can say thank you, Jesus, to let the Lord know that I am grateful. If God has given you another chance, you ought to give him the praise. Yeah. I like what David said in Psalm 100. He said, make a joyful noise. Unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we. I said we are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. I like this verse. He said, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all 
generation, my brothers and sisters, this is, you need to understand right now that the fact that God has given you another chance, you know God didn't have to do it. You know we don't deserve his goodness. I was watching, I was watching, uh, anybody remember Reverend Ike? And I, okay, I was watching a video the other day and saw Reverend Ike on the video. And Reverend Ike was saying to his listeners, you deserve every good thing that's coming your way. He told his folk who would listen to him, stop saying you don't deserve this and deserve that. You deserve every good thing that's coming your way. And I said, I wonder which God he's serving. <laughs> because when I read my Bible, the Bible teaches me that our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags. When I read my Bible, my Bible tells me all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So when I get on my knees or when I wake up in the morning and I realize I don't deserve God's goodness, I realize I don't deserve another chance, the first thing I do is I give God a praise. I don't stand at this, Lord. Grace. Thank you for giving me what's mine. No, 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 no. Grace. Because once I start saying it's mine, God said, no, it's mine, and I'm going to take it from you. So when God gives us another chance, don't take it lightly. You haven't been lucky. It's nothing else that allowed you to get another chance. It's nothing but God. And you ought to be grateful that God has given you another chance. Some of us sitting here right now should be in the hospital. Some of us sitting here right now should be up the hill somewhere. Some of us sitting here right now should be in jail. I know I haven't walked the street yet. Somebody sitting here right now should be in deep, 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 deep trouble. But because God stepped in and said, no, I'm not going to let that happen to you. And he gave us another chance. I'm here to tell you, Grandpa Hill, we ought to be praising God. Just the fact that he allowed us to walk into this church this morning. Just the fact that he allowed us to see another day. Somebody ought to be grateful and say, Lord, thank you for another chance. Thank you. Thank you. When God gives you another chance, give him the praise. But secondly, when God gives you another chance, learn the lessons from the experiences from which God delivered you. Learn the lessons from the experiences from which God delivered you. I don't think anybody here would disagree with me if I said I didn't enjoy whippings. You're quiet because you agree. I did not, I don't think anybody did. You know, my mom and daddy used to whip you and say, I'm doing it because I love you. And they know you don't. We're doing it because you don't. But they were whipping because they wanted to teach us a lesson from the mistakes that we had made. And any time as we walk through this life, we go through something and we go through some pain and some suffering that is, uh, that is because of what we've done. When God brings us out, when we know we got another chance, we ought to learn some things from what we have been through. David said in Psalm 119, verses 71 and 72, David said, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Yeah. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. So in other words, David was saying it hurt when I went through affliction. It, it, it was sorrowful when I went through affliction, but now that you have brought me out of affliction, Lord, I'm thankful because I have learned some lessons. It is a sad commentary to make a bunch of mistakes. You are delivered from it and then go back and do the same thing over again. All right. That's what the children of Israel used to do. That's what they used to do. Every time they mess up, God tell them, okay, I'll forgive you. I'll restore you. They go right back and do what? The same thing. There ought to be some empty. One morning I was going to work, and uh, when I was working at R.H. Boyd, I came out the, um, the, the Broadway Parkway, I came down the ramp, and I pulled up behind this lady who was waiting for the traffic to clear on Centennial Boulevard so we can go on. And as we sat there for the traffic to clear, I kept looking everywhere else but where? In front of me. I saw the traffic moving, 
and I assumed mm -hmm. that the lady in front of me had moved. Guess what I did? I hit the gas. And when I hit that gas, I went bam, right into her back. Got out the car, she was fine, I was fine. Called police, changed insurance information, did all that stuff. But I tell you what, every day since that day, when I get to that same location when I was working there, guess what I did? I stopped and kept doing this. <laughs> I learned from being inattentive. I should have been looking in front of me. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, when accidents happen, what we ought to do is learn from those accidents and apply those lessons to our lives so we never have to do it again. And that's what I like about God. He loves us so much that even when we mess up and he gives us another chance, he lets us know you ought to learn from the mistake you made because you know if you do it again, you'll be in trouble. So, so, so when God gives us another chance, I'm not saying dwell on the mistake. I'm not saying look at it every day and say, hey, mistake, how you doing today? No. But I'm saying learn the lessons that those mistakes should have taught us so we don't go back and do it again. When God gives us another chance, give him the praise. When God gives us another chance learn from the mistakes of the past from past experiences but thirdly when God gives us another chance be willing to give someone another chance all right all right if God is going to give us another chance you've got to be willing to give someone else another chance we live in the world today where people offend one another. We live in a world today where feelings are hurt. We live in a world today where people do wrong to one another. When it comes to us as Christians, my brothers and sisters, we may live in the world, but we're not of the world. And so since we think like Jesus, since we act like Jesus, then we ought to be able to give someone else another chance after they offend us. And the reason why is because each day, no matter what we do, God gives us another chance. Yeah. Yeah. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. Their only example for prayer was the Pharisees. And the Pharisees had a wrong and a, just a sorrowful, pitiful way of praying. So Jesus said to the disciples, I'm going to teach you how to pray. And when you're reading the Lord's Prayer, you get down to the Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. Jesus says in the prayer, the model prayer, Forgive us our debt as we forgive, those, forgive our debtors. And some other translation says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Here's the thing, my brothers and sisters. If God is going to extend to me the privilege of being forgiven, the privilege of getting another chance, then I ought to be willing to forgive someone else who has hurt me. And the reason why is because when you read that prayer, God forgiving me is depending upon me forgiving someone else. So if I say to God, God forgive me, I can hear him saying, Thomas, have you forgiven someone who crossed you? And the reason why, my brothers and sisters, is because every time we do something against God's will, we go to him in prayer, saying, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, please forgive. You know, I think I'm going to share this with you before. You know the concept of forgiving simply is this, to let it go. Yeah. Yeah. Let it go. God, for today you may not see him. A lot of people are walking like this. And you know why they're walking like that? They're carrying the burdens of past offenses. Mm -hmm. Someone hurt him, I don't know how long ago. But instead of forgiving that person, they decided, I'm going to keep it. Because it's, it's, it's strange how, you know, I don't understand it. It's strange how people hang on to stuff for such a long, long time. I mean, 15, 20, 30 years. 
forsook him and they hung over because they had refused to give somebody else another chance. Grab a hill. If you want to go through life and enjoy the kind of joy that the choir sang about this morning, you've got to learn to forgive and give somebody another chance just like God gave you another chance. Because if not, you're going to be hostile for a long time. All right. Carry that burden because of what someone did a long time ago. <laughs> and sometimes uh, uh, I've met people in, in ministry who had an issue with me. And I would ask them, what, 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 what is the issue you have? They say, I don't remember. Others say, I don't know. What shucks? You mean to tell me you've been carrying that thing so long that you don't even know what it is? Let it go. Give me another chance to reconcile with you. And they discover that when they do so, life does not only become better for me, life becomes better for them. Because you see, forgiving doesn't only benefit the offender it also benefits the offended. The person who offends needs to be forgiven. But once that person is forgiven, the one who forgives, guess what? Is set free of that burden of anger, that burden of animosity, whatever it is. So knowing that God gives us another chance, what we ought to do is pass that chance along to someone else. And say, I forgive you also. There's a story told in the Gospels. I don't know the exact reference right now of a, a guy who owed the king a, a lot of money. And he went uh, before the king and, and began to cry and beg the king. I know I owe you. I know I owe you. Uh, the, the punishment was in you know, a prison and, and taking all his property. So the king said, Take it with you. I, I, I'll forgive you. I, I'll let it go. You ain't got to worry about it. Guess what the fellow did? went in the city and found someone else who owed him. And when you read the text, the text says he went up to the guy and grabbed the guy by his throat, put him down and said, you going to pay me today what you owe me. I mean, he was just as angry, just been forgiven, just given another chance. But he went out and found someone else who owed him and, and grabbed him and said, you going to pay me today or I'm killing you. Well, that's why we ought to be careful, my brothers and sisters, whatever we do in public. Because somebody always watching us. Someone from the king's palace just happened to be down the street and saw what this forgiven servant was doing to someone else. And guess what they did? They went back and told the king. The king said, oh yeah, bring him here. He brought him, he lost everything. And I think when you read the text, you see that his life was destroyed because the king said to him, I forgave you of your debt and you got the nerve to go out there and grab somebody else. I'm telling you, grab a hill. Whenever God gives us a chance or another chance, what we ought to do is give somebody else yeah. Yeah. another chance because you just don't know you will need that chance again. When God gives us another chance, we ought to be grateful. When God gives us another chance, we're to learn some lessons from past experiences. When God gives us another chance, we need to be willing to give all of us another chance. Fourthly and finally, when God gives us another chance, let us commit ourselves to the service of God. Yeah. When you look at Psalm 116, David says, what shall I render? unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me. Yeah. He said, I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. He said, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. And then when you jump down to verse 16, David says, oh Lord, truly, I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. My brothers and sisters, when you look back at how far God has brought you, you ought not have a problem serving the Lord. He has given us 
another chance not just to sit down and do nothing but to get up and do something for the kingdom. When you look back at not only yesterday, but last month, last year, five, ten years ago, and you see how God picked you up, turned you around, and set your feet on solid ground. When you see how God has brought you from yesterday into today and how he has loved you, you ought to have no problem showing up and saying to God, I am your servant. I am going to serve you. And my brothers and sisters, you don't have to have your name in the headlights. You don't have to have your name on the greatest marquees around the big cities. All you got to do is do what you can because the truth is God has given each of us talents and abilities. And when we see what God has brought us from, we ought to use what we have to the honor and glory of God. And that's why I say, my brothers and my sisters, that we ought to do what we can. Don't wait for anybody to come and call us by name. Don't wait for anybody to put our names on the road. Don't wait for anyone to put our names on the program. Don't wait for an email or a phone call. You just do what God has given you to do. You don't have to wait for anybody to come and create some kind of a case for you. When you look at yourself and you realize that God has brought you a mighty long way, you ought to get in a hurry and go ahead and serve the Lord. Have I got a witness? Yeah. You may not be able to sing like the angels, but go ahead and do what you can. You may not be able to preach like Paul, but do what you can. You may not be able to pray like Daniel, but do what you can. You may not have the patience of Job, but do what you can. You may not have the strength of Samson, but do what you can. You may not have the swiftness of a Peter, but do what you can. And the reason you ought to do what you can is because you've got a charge to keep. You've got a God to glorify. And one of these days, when God checks the record, God will see that he brought you a mighty long way. God will see that he brought you out of dangers, seen and unseen. Have I got a witness here? God will see that when you were in trouble, he was your lawyer. When you were sick, he was your doctor. When you had no friend, that he was your friend. I wish I had a witness there. And so when God gives you another chance, I don't know about you, but you ought to get in the hurry. And you ought to say, like David said, what shall I render unto God for all his benefits toward me? I don't know about you, grab a hill, but when I look and I see how far God has brought me, I can't help myself. I will serve the Lord. Have I got a witness here? I will serve the Lord until I die. He's been so good to me. He's been so good to me. Brought me from sickness. Brought me from pain. Brought me from trouble. And I refuse. I refuse. I refuse to sit down and do nothing. I don't know about y'all, but this is my testimony. I love the Lord. He heard my cry. He did it every groan. Long as I live and trouble arise, I'll hasten to his throne. A charge to keep. I have a God to glorify. And every dying soul to save and fit for the sky. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to serve him. Why are you serving him, Thomas? I serve him because he's good. He's good. He's good. Oh, shucks. He's good. Yes, he is. He loves me. Gives me another chance. And all I can do is say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. For one more day, I thank you for food on my table. I thank you for clothes on my back. I thank you for a beautiful church. I thank you for a loving family. I thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
He gave me another chance. Didn't have to do it. But he gave me another chance. And every day I wake up and see that I'm still in the land of the living. I would say to God, Lord, thank you. I don't deserve it. But I think every time I wake up and I see I'm still in the land of the living, I look at myself and say, wow, I'm going to do what the Lord has called me to do. I can't sit around and decide I'm going on today. No. If God lets me wake up, I got to do something for him. And if you're here today and you're not doing something for God, if you're here today and you're sitting and you're just wasting your time, first of all, you know your time don't belong to you, no way. The time belongs to God. I heard a song a long time ago, the writer talked about it, I got a uh, uh, time is on my side. No, it's not. Because time is limited. We're here today and we're gone tomorrow. We shall have some help in here. So while we have time, we ought to give the best that we have to God. David said to God, teach me the number of my days. Every chance I get, I'm going to tell him thank you. Every chance I get, I'm going to say, Lord, what can I do for you? Yeah. Valentine's Day is coming up this weekend. And, and, and somebody's going to be asking the question, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> oh, don't let that somebody be God. Because if God has to remember and ask you the question, what, what did you, what have you done for me? I hope and pray that we can say, Lord, I did, just like Hezekiah did. I did this, I did the other. I did this, and I did it in your name. I did it for your glory. My brothers and sisters, God has given you another chance. Prayerfully, he'll give you one more tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after, and the day after. The question is, what will you do with the chances God has given you? I hope and pray that you will take each chance, knowing that another one is not promised. Have I got a witness here? It's not promised. But at every chance God gives you, that he will use that chance to propagate his gospel, to advance his kingdom, to help somebody along the way, knowing that one day we all have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account for what we have done in this body. Now here's the beautiful part. If you're here today and you don't know this Jesus, you don't know God, guess what? You got a chance right now. If you're here today and you're unsaved and you know Jesus is not in your life, you have a chance right now. It just might be the reason why God sent you here this morning or brought you here this morning is because he wants you to get saved. It just might be that God wants you in his kingdom, wants you on his field, but you first have to accept his son Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. And you know, Jesus still saving for Yes, he is. His grace and his, his mercy is still alive. All you've got to do is open your heart and your mind and say to Jesus, I receive you. The choir is going to lead us in singing. And if you're here today and you know within yourself, you don't have Jesus in your life. You don't have God in your life. If you're here today and you have blown all the chances that God has given you, but today you say, I want to take advantage of this opportunity that God has given me. This is your time. If you're here today just in need of prayer or a word of encouragement, come just the way you are and let God minister to you. Let God bless you as you decide today to take every chance, every opportunity, every privilege that God lays before you. God will do it for you. He's done it for us. And he'll do the same for you. Let us stand as we open the doors of the church as the choir saints. Is there one today?
There's nothing oh, so precious. Yes. Mm -hmm. With Jesus love. Come just the way you are. That's true. Oh, every treasure. Oh, yeah. We go on. You know I'm happy. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, to accept or reject the invitation. All right, put it like this. Are we all in agreement that we want to go? <laughs> Let us stand. <laughs> Let us stand, please. My brothers and sisters, as you go through this day, I pray that God will bless you each step out the way. Lean and depend on him, know that there's nothing you go through this week that God and you cannot handle together. Right. Pray for next Sunday. I mean, starting today, pray for next Sunday. I believe that's going to be a great day in the life of Gravel Hill. So please pray next Sunday that the only person preaching tomorrow afternoon will be Deacon Steve Whitaker. Uh, so lift him up that as he stands and this time he won't be standing down there. This time he'll be standing here behind the pulpit. Okay, because initial sermons are done from behind the pulpit and pray that as God elevates him here, that God will rest upon him and Bless him with the spirit he needs to deliver the word. Steve, I remember my first time 
It wasn't easy, bro. <laughs> I don't mean to scare you. <laughs> but there will be enough loved ones here. Church family will be here. Your pastor will be here. Preachers will be here to support you. And, and we pray God's blessing. We know you can do it. We heard you down there. Amen. Only difference is this time, you're going to be up here. Amen. One prayer for Dan as, as Dan also moves up in his level of service as an ordained minister on next Sunday. I pray that God will be with him. For those of you who have not uh, been a part of an ordination service, there will be a period of examination of Dan. And Dan has been studying. Uh, the purpose of that is not to fail him. It's only done to confirm that he uh, knows exactly what it is he's going to preach and what he believes. And so there will be uh, the, the, the examination first, and the second half will be the preaching of Steve uh, for his just sermon. Basically, y'all, uh, we're going to have a good time next week, Sunday. Uh, but just pray that God will be in the house and that God will have his way. Thank you again. Uh, for uh, all you do here at Crapper Hill. So glad to get to see Vincent and Lisa. We pray that God will bless you as we continue to serve. Continue to keep all those whose names are mentioned in prayer as we go through the rest of this week. Amen? Amen. Let Let the church Say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church, let the church say amen. Come on, let's do it again. Oh. you for this another chance you've given us to worship thank you for this another chance you've given us to hear a word from heaven Lord we pray that as we leave this place that we will treat each chance you gave us with an attitude of gratitude that you will help us oh God to to serve you each day of our life because we know you didn't have to give us that chance. But we're so thankful. And we pray that everything we do will bring honor, glory, and praise to your most holy and righteous name. God, we start right now praying for Steve Whitaker. We ask you right, we starting right now, Father. Asking God to crown him with wisdom. Crown him with knowledge from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Fill him with your spirit. So as he stands behind this sacred desk on next Sunday, that God, we will hear indeed a word from heaven. We pray, oh God, for Dan, baby. We pray, God, that as we ordain him next Sunday, that God, you will open doors for him to do this ministry of reconciliation. That he will go forth and continue to preach your word, not only here at Gravel Hill, but in whatever doors you open. Lord, we pray that all is well with Deacon Vaden. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we, don't, we haven't heard anything, but Lord, we're trusting you uh, that all is well. And even now, as we go to see about him, I pray, God, that when we get there, that all will be well. Uh, we lift up Sister Hattie and, and all others who are going through these moments. I pray, God, that you will have your way. Carry us now, and may we do something each day of our lives to bring honor, glory, and praise to your most holy and righteous name. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in our hearts from now henceforth and forevermore. Let us all sing together. Amen. Repeat after me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for another chance. God bless you.